I've been playing professional basketball overseas for five years now. And what that means is I have a 10 month season in the country I'm at, and then I come home to the States for a two month off season. Now in this off season, I have to stay in shape, try and add stuff to my game and make some strides in the weight room. Now in years past, I've struggled. I've overworked myself or haven't done enough. But this off season, I'm dialed, especially in the weight room. So if that interests you and you wanna get better and learn how to lift and work out in the weight room as a basketball player, come along for a week in my life, lifting, training, preparing for my upcoming season. We had five days on and two days resting. Of the five days, two were output focused, two were hypertrophy and muscle building focused, and one was rehab and recovery focused. For our output days, one was through the vertical range of movement and one was for the horizontal range of movement. For the muscle building days, one was for pulling movements and the other was for pushing movements. The rehab day was personally tailored to my injury history, body tendencies, and current areas of inefficiency. This week was one of the higher weight room workloads of my off season training, but as it usually goes, I felt great afterwards. Let's get straight into the different exercises of each day, the intentions and some of the finer details. This is a weight room week in the life of a current professional basketball player. Let's get to it. To start the week, I'll hit the isometric holds to begin the lift, both the knee extension and the single leg wall sit. Both these help rebuild the patella tendon and also have a pain relieving effect that allows us to have higher quality of movement due to the lessening of pain. Pain is usually one of the biggest obstacles to overcome in terms of increasing our output. The more pain you have, the further away you'll be from your max output capabilities. Next, we get into our movement prep exercises. These exercises target the muscle groups that will be most involved in our working sets of this workout. I had half kneeling hamstring slides to get my hamstrings comfortable with producing force through a deep stretch and also single leg lands after a box jump to tune up my stability and deceleration strength. Today, our intention was output. For basketball players, it's important to consider output more than just weight used or mass, but as the complete force equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. Mass being the weight moved, acceleration being the speed at which you move the weight. Sometimes we can get more output by moving less weight, but faster and more explosive rather than just heavy weight load. This concept applies more directly to basketball than just brute strength. For today's workout, I aimed for the middle ground in my weight choices. I chose weights that were heavy for me, but that I, I was also able to move explosively and with good form. A quick reminder to rest 120 to 150 seconds in between each superset to ensure that you are fully rested in order to produce max output for each set. In my opinion, the most important exercise today was the trap bar deadlift. This exercise is the hip hinge position that we experience every single play as a basketball player. It happens every time we make a dynamic movement, so improving output in this position will be very impactful to our strength, speed, and power on the court. I've been doing a lot of body weight exercise in block one of my summer training now that it's block two i'm loading some of these movements such as chin-ups load the body to produce adaptation that's the idea behind these weighted chin-ups in summary on mondays we focus on our force output vertically the goal is to move heavy weight and to move it fast now let's get into day two to start here's a super speed run of the daily mobility routine it's the last time you'll see it, but just know that it's done before every weight room session. These exercises are intended to warm my joints up and work through the various ranges of motion. It's important to be familiar with the ranges of motion that I'm about to enter during my workout. Listen, I'm aiming to become a more dynamic basketball player and not a bodybuilder. My body has to be able to move fluidly with power and strength through all the movements that basketball will bring. This daily mobility is tailored to my body and the common areas of soreness that I have. There will be little variability in my routine except for a few adjustments depending on the emphasis of the workout. Maybe if it's push or pull, horizontal or vertical, that is a bit more nuanced. And the idea is to more so have a consistent daily mobility routine. This routine is set up to be about 10 or so minutes. And in these 10 minutes, I am doing a sort of check-in with my body. What am I feeling? What areas are sore or tired? Questions like these. The reps shown are all recommendations, but for me, the rep count change daily based on the information my body is telling me through the soreness and tightness. Learn your body, study your body, because this is the most important thing in your basketball endeavors. I suggest you come up with some sort of personalized mobility plan that you will run through every day before each weight room session. It'll prime you to have better, more high quality quality weight room sessions. Then up next, of course, our movement prep. Today we hit the wall open books to wake up our trunk to prepare 
for a pull focused hypertrophy day. Hypertrophy is just a scientific way of saying muscle building both in size and strength. All of the exercises today should be done with the intention of feeling each repetition, going at a slow slash moderate pace, and going through the full range of motion. Think about the muscle contraction as you are performing the exercise and do weights that are reasonable to the required number of repetitions. Since today is a pull focused day, the majority of the exercise will be pulling movements. This is going to be an oversimplification, but think about your arm for a second. When bending and extending your elbow, which muscles are responsible for the bending and which are for the extending? If you said your bicep for the bending and tricep for the extending, you nailed it. For every movement, one muscle group had to contract and the other had to relax. This is that push-pull relationship muscle groups have between related others. Biceps pull, triceps push, hamstrings pull, quads push, chest pushes, back pulls. Hopefully you guys are kind of getting it. We isolated the hamstrings, biceps, and back today with the intention to build muscle in those pulling groups. One big thing I forgot to mention on Monday is that after each weight room session that I find it mandatory to get on the court for at least 15 minutes. These aren't usually going to be full skill sessions in volume due to the workload just finished in the weight room, but they are important. I use them for two main reasons. One, to reestablish my touch and feel for the ball, especially after any sort of upper body pump. And two, to apply the weight room work directly to my movement, quality, and flow. I'll usually do some ball handling movements into creative finishing, paying attention to how I feel in these dynamic positions. Do I feel stronger? Do I feel more comfortable? Do I simply need to work through these positions? I evaluate questions like these through the whole post-lift workout. I normally don't plan these workouts very rigidly. I like to give myself freedom to experiment with different things and to just get creative. I'll also use this time as a cool down from the lift. I'll end with some sort of shooting by myself and chasing my own rebound. But of course, there are rarely rebounds because you guys know I'm an absolute bucket. But you guys probably know that by now. <laughs> Kidding. Kind of. Not really. All right, now for day three. On Wednesdays or day three, we rest from the weight room and usually play some sort of open gym pickup basketball. This is also a variable day based on how our body is feeling. If we are really sore or tired, maybe we take the day off completely. Intention of today is to check in on my body and make a solid decision on what it needs to be capable of finishing the week strong. Now for day four. Today, my close friend Steve worked out with me. He's not a hooper, so it's funny to hear his perspective on my workouts compared to what he's used to doing. Wait, see how this goes to like a full straight? That's all I got. Really? I haven't stretched <laughs> in 10 years. Dude, look at my That's so unhealthy. <laughs> We started with some movement prep for our horizontal output workout. Today we have some heavy upper body exercises, shoulder taps to get our shoulder and core stability going. Glutes are responsible for a big portion of horizontal force output, the focus of today obviously. Think of a hip thrust movement in a broad jump or long jump stop. We used the glute bridge walkouts to activate them, then we got straight into the working sets. I know bench press isn't the most direct correlation to basketball, but it's a good measure of overall upper body force output. Usually I would use dumbbells for more of a stability challenge, but again, we were going for force output and the most straightforward way of doing that was barbell bench. We paired bench with RDLs and personally, I am more comfortable with using hex bar for this movement. Probably why this form was a little poor, but still RDLs are a great exercise that works that thrusting movement that happens before all basketball dynamic movements. Be careful going through that deep range of motion in your hamstrings. It will make you very sore the next day, as well as sometimes it'll cause you to over compensate with your lower back so again just be cautious of this this day being an output day make sure you rest 120 to 150 seconds in between supersets and aim for close to maximum output in each set with the rate of perceived exertion or rpa being eight and a half to eight point five and yeah that's a wrap on day four now for day five, mobility, then movement prep as per usual, then straight into the push focus hypertrophy workout. For a push day like today, the main muscle groups will be our chest, quads, calves, shoulders, and triceps. I'm not gonna lie, this is a bit of a meathead workout, but there's some basketball application to it. The honest truth is that as hoopers, you have to be able to pass the eye test. You gotta look like a beast as well as play like a beast. Sometimes that can be an aspect beyond the general application of building muscle. Building out our quads is also great for knee stability and resilience. Exercises such as these leg press eccentrics improve knee health and lower body dexterity. Today, I chose a weight that was tough for me on these because I felt my quads working to support my knees, and that was pretty reassuring. Now, we are nearing the end of the week and have put a lot of load on our bodies. Obviously, isometrics are still load, but they are not a load through a range of motion. 
our bodies respond very differently to them. They actually improve tendon resiliency and muscle dexterity without too much load through the joint. Because again, you're just holding the position, you're not going up and down through that movement. I like to think both of these goblet squat isometrics and bent knee isometrics as actively giving love back to my joints after beating them down all week. Sort of a bro lift today, but I left this workout feeling strong and better than when I walked in, which is a sign of choosing good working weights. Guys, we are nearing the finish line. Let's finish strong. Okay, day six, the last lift of the week, much different than the other days. Today, I did a comprehensive checkup on all the problem areas of my body. I had a weird neck pointer thing from a bad night of sleep, some hip tightness and some shoulder soreness. All these things are going to be addressed today. I suggest before going into this last lift of your week, the night before you write down all the areas of pain in your body and then structure this last workout as a prehab or rehab workout for all those little nagging issues. I started with hurdle unders, leg swings, and hip cars as movement prep for my hip joints. I have chronically tight hips like most basketball players, so these exercises felt incredibly freeing. After the movement prep, we loaded the hip joint with some Cossack squats. This exercise builds strength through the deepest range of motion of the hip. Hoopers like me who have beat up knees need to prioritize building up all the muscles supporting the knee in order to lessen the load on it. These are great for that. The rest of the exercises done in today's weight room session were less about load and more about stability and control with muscle groups around some of my damaged areas. Again, use today as an example of how to structure your rehabilitation weight room lift, but do not necessarily copy unless you have the same injury history as me, which I guarantee you don't. On day seven, I completely rest, no basketball, no weight room, zero stressors on my body. The idea is to let the work from the week set in and to rest both my mind and body for another week of training. That's it, a full week of training in the weight room in the peak of my off season. Use this for your own workouts. You know, all the workouts are in there. Try it, experiment with it. Let me know any questions you have in the comments. DM me on Instagram and I will send you a PDF of the whole workout. And yeah, let's keep getting better together. And like, as always, Wait, wait, wait. make sure you hit that like and subscribe button i'll be putting out a lot more content uh finishing up my off season and then getting straight into next season so yeah uh hope you guys enjoy and as always live a typical cheers she said, yeah, I know. She said, yeah, I know. wish i can make it easier i can i just know right and wrong